Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, I'm gonna be feeding my tilantias, commonly known as air plants, with some new um, tilantia fertilizer that I've got from Amazon. Now this is actually called Epiphyte Feed, but it's also good for tilantias as well. And also all types of type of epiphytic plants, including epiphyllums as well. And um, what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be testing this out. I have not used this product before. It's got very good reviews. And it's gonna be very exciting to see how it does for my tilantias. We've got a, quite a good collection here in the windowsill in our kitchen window. And we also have a load upstairs in our bathroom window as well. And I normally use a pre-made, um, uh, sorry, pre-made tilantia air plant fertilizer from Crafty Plants. But we've run out of that. And this one looks like it's gonna be a lot more economical because it's one that you dilute to rainwater and use in a little mix of spray. As you can see, we've got that here. And the measurements are, um, two milliliters per one liter. And we have a liter of rainwater here in one of these plant sprays. So we're gonna be putting the, um, the measurement in there, giving it a good shake, and then applying it to the tilantias. And then what I'm gonna be doing then is in the following weeks, give you a bit of feedback on how this fertilizer works. They say using it roughly about once, one or two um, times um, a month. So I'll probably use this about once or, or probably twice a month at the most because tilantias really do not like to have a lot of feed they're air plants which means they take the moisture and the, also the feed um, from the actual air so um, this is just additional fertilizing as well and this is going to be fun to do and i've got hansi that's going to be filming filming doing this now he's my wonderful fiance hansi <laughs> And if you're not familiar with Hansi, do go over and check out his amazing YouTube channel, Family of Cactusy and Other Beauties. Links will be up above. Mm, thank you, darling. And uh, Hansi is very good with measurements because I'm a disaster when it comes to working out measurements. For some reason, I am really not good. But, um, uh, but I, I'm not especially good at that. But I have special things for measurements. Yeah, Hansi's and got great have, measurements. If you have that, you don't have to have the brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned guys, I'm going to be making a video on how to care for tilantia air plants in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. But this is just a little bit of a showing you how, we, how we're going to be feeding our tilantias here. Hansi has got a great little syringe here with the perfect size measurements, so it can, it can exactly measure out two, two milliliters. And, and spritz it in. Brilliant. Fantastic. It's a great little invention there. <laughs> and uh, I used to take up water in it. Great. And so. There, now it's all in there. Fantastic. And that's the epiphyte feed that we've got. As I say, we've got this from Amazon. And we've not used it before, so it's not one we're actually recommending because it's totally new to us. As I say, we'll be using a pre-made one by Crafty Plants and we're very, very happy with it. This one is a completely new one, very good feedback on Amazon, and it's a dilute, it's one you have to dilute so it's a lot more economical. So it's gonna be good to see how this works. It's an Epiphyte feed. It's actually by a company called Green24, Germany. And it's for all type of epiphytic plants, not just Tillandsia's air plants, also for all types, including bromeliads and um, epiphyllum as well. Even, uh, even ferns as well. Even ferns, yeah. absolutely, yep, yep. So, epiphytes, yeah, even uh, epiphyllums or what? Epiphyllums, 100%. Yeah. And it's always best because, as I say, Tillandsia's <coughs> air plants do take up uh, nutrients from the air. So it's really, really important you don't over fertilize. You're better to under than over fertilize. Um, that's always a, a good rule of thumb. So there we go, Hansi's measured that out very good. Great little pipette there with all the yeah. measurements, perfectly, um, it's look at that. Here, so it's so good. Up to 100 milliliters. That's fantastic. No, yeah, as a one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In 20 degrees Celsius. Brilliant. 
And now just give this a good, good shake. And I'm going to get Hansi then to film me spraying the Tillantias to show you how we do it. And uh, <clears throat> what we do with our Tillantias. Now, they are air plants and they take moisture and nutrients from the air. But you do, they do, do still need to have a lot of moisture and water. They need watering like normal plants do. And what, what I'd normally recommend is at least probably once a week, either soaking them in a bucket of rainwater for about half an hour so they can take in all of that water and then hang them back up again where you have them or have them in their position. But what we do here, because we have them all hanging up, I spray these air plants every single day with, with pure rainwater and thoroughly, thoroughly soak them. I don't mist them, I soak them so the water's dripping off them. And they can only take in as much water as they actually need, so you can't overwater them, which is good. But that's what I do. And the reason why I do this every single day is because they're permanently hanging up here. But if you have plants where um, you have them in positions where you can't necessarily just keep misting them and spraying them all the time, then maybe better off just to soak them at least once or twice a week. Um, but when if you do mist them like or soak them with with rainwater, you must thoroughly thoroughly soak them so the water is dripping off them. And now, Hansi, oh yeah. please, my lovey, yeah. I get the little chair here. I'm going to stand on here. This is what I do. Now, this is what I do every single day. I don't obviously feed them every single day. I only feed. I'm going to be feeding them once, twice a month at the very most. But every single day, I do spray them in rainwater. And the reason why I use rainwater and not tap water is because tap water contains chemicals, um, especially lime and other chemicals. And with air plants, they do have um, they have tiny, tiny scales on their leaves, and these are called tris trisomes. And they actually open and close, and they open to take in moisture and nutrients, and they close. So if you're spraying with tap water and it has lime, this can put a coating over these tiny little scales that take in the moisture. And it's not good for them. If you occasionally use tap water, the odd once or twice, it's not going to hurt them. But if you're doing it regularly, it can be very dangerous. So please use rainwater with Tillantia air plants. If you can't get rainwater, if you live in a country that you really can't get rainwater, you're not allowed to collect rainwater, do use some type of distilled water or ionized, deionized water so it's completely pure. The same with carnivorous plants and that. But um, as I say, this is rainwater. He would never have to run out of rainwater here in Ireland. In fact, if anything, we have too much rainwater. <laughs> so that's the fertilizer, all completely mixed. And now to go ahead, giving them a good bath. And uh, what I do here, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly soak. I don't mist because misting is gonna do nothing. Misting will increase the humidity if you want to increase the humidity, but it will do nothing to um, make the tilantias take in the water. You need to thoroughly soak so it's absolutely dripping off. As you can see, there are loads of moisture on these. And um, this is actually Spanish moss, um, a very common type of tilantia, <laughs> very commonly seen. It grows very fast, loves moisture. It, it likes a lot more moisture than a lot of the other tilantias do. So it needs to be thoroughly soaked every day. And as you can see there, the water's dripping off this. This is one of our other tilantias here. I'm um, not quite sure what all these individual ones are, but there's many, many different types. As I say, thoroughly soak. We don't just mist. So, so it's absolutely dripping off. Tilantias will only take in as much water as they can at any given time, so you're not going to drown them. But the most important thing is that when you do soak them, when you soak them in a bucket of rainwater or you thoroughly soak them with, with the spray like I'm doing here, is that they do dry out pretty quick. If you're spraying them and they stay wet, mainly the base, they can rot. So it's very important that they don't stay damp for long because that's the biggest cause of um, problems with these tilantias. This is another type of Spanish moss. This is a Spanish moss called um, Tilantia uh, Spanish moss Kimberly. <laughs> and my second name is Kimberly, so very special that this is also called Kimberly. And uh, here, this is actually a piece of um, wood, uh, driftwood that we found, or Hansi found at the beach in Downpatrick here in Ireland. Very special because it was found. Here, another type of Spanish moss. One of the thicker, uh, thicker varieties, um, lovely big thick sort of um, 
You can call them stems, I suppose. <laughs> um, very lovely. And here, another one again. I can move the chair now, I think. Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, and then this one here, very good soaking. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, the water's dripping off. We have a few more here. Tillantias are great to pop around, around cacti. They do very well with cacti because they're like the sort of same type of dry conditions. But here is only euphorbias, isn't it? Yeah, in this window we have all euphorbias. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it there. Give a bit. Oh. There you go, got the spraying again. This one is um, Tillantia testudo, testudo and it yeah, doesn't like to have as much moisture as the other ones so I just give this more of a mist than I do a soak but the other ones I thoroughly soak and that's pretty much it. Now this one here is our Cacticola. Tillantia cacticola and it's called cacticola because it does actually grow on cacti in its natural habitat <laughs> and we have this growing on our euphorbia here. It's very happy here. And in the palm house in the... In the <coughs> Glasgow, there was this Cacticola on Sirius Peruvianus. Yeah, it was amazing. Lovely plants. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. As I say, thoroughly soaking it. And then a little bit of Spanish moss that fell off ours there. And that's it. So that's... Oh, no, here is... Oh, more. oh, more. <laughs> nearly, yeah. nearly, nearly missed these here. These are more Tillantias on our bromeliards. As I say, Tillantias are part of the bromeliard family. So they are great to actually pop on top of your tila, uh, on your bromeliards as well. And this, again, because this is a foliar feed and is actually for um, air plants and tillantia type of plants and epiphytic plants, it's perfect for bromeliards as well. So, my, and you can use it on all type of house plants. I mean, it hasn't got to just be epiphytic. Perfect for ferns here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great little misty. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Hansi, for filming. And that was it, guys. As I say, I bought this from Amazon. I'm not promoting it because I've never used this product before. This is the first time I'm using it, so I don't want to promote and say, guys, go ahead and get it. It's brilliant because I really don't know what it's like. This is the first time I've used it. I'm going to probably be using it probably another couple of weeks, giving them another spray again. And I'll let you know how I get on with it. If the plants seem to be doing well with it, that's very good. Now, I'm going to make a separate video on how to care for Tillandsia air plants. But just bear in mind, if you're using a plant feed on Tillandsias, it's very, in fact, it's absolutely paramount that you don't use a feed that has copper. Because copper is very harmful to Tillandsias. It can poison them. Now, if copper is in, copper is in most plant food, in very, if it's in very, very, very small amounts, <coughs> Not a problem at all. You know, no, 0.0. Microfeeding, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 if it's like 0, 0, 0, 0.1%, it's not going to hurt. A little bit of magnesium. But if it's a high magnesium, um, sorry, a little bit of magnesium <laughs> and zinc and everything like that. But if it's a high copper. proportion of copper, um, it <clears> can be detrimental. This one does actually contain, I think it says it on the back, copper, 0.0001%. So it's very, very low copper. And it's especially for Tillandsia, so they're bearing that in mind. But if you're using a normal type of houseplant feed and you're diluting it for your tillantias and it's high in copper, it can be dangerous. It can poison them. So to please only use a fertilizer that's specially for tillantias. That actually states that. So that is very important. And I'll let you know how we get on with these guys. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of Plant power <laughs> from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>